Welcome to the demonstration video of the Arca Trusted OS Secure Boot Chain for Raspberry Pi 4. In this demonstration, we will showcase how Arca Trusted OS provides a secure boot process by utilizing safe software. We have selected the Raspberry Pi 4B as an example for this demonstration. So let's dive in and explore how Arca Trusted OS ensures a reliable and secure boot experience for your Raspberry Pi 4B device. Before we proceed with the demonstration, let's take a moment to understand the essence of Arca Trusted OS. Arca Trusted OS is a Linux-based operating system specifically designed to safeguard data in all its states, at rest, in motion, and in use. Arca Trusted OS can run on x86 and ARM architectures. In this slide, we present the common ground between the two OSs for each architecture. To ensure the utmost protection against system intrusion, this operating system adheres to the security guidelines outlined by NIST in their special publication, SP-800-190, which focuses on securing containerized applications. According to NIST terminology, Arca Trusted OS is classified as a container-specific OS, signifying that it has been purposely developed to execute containers, thereby minimizing the potential attack surface on the host OS. By employing an immutable design, Arca Trusted OS significantly restricts any modifications that end users or malicious entities can make to the host OS from within containers. During each booth process, Arca Trusted OS establishes a chain of trust known as Secure Booth based on hardware elements like TPM 2.0. This ensures that Arca Trusted OS operates within a trusted execution environment, maintaining the integrity and authenticity of the system. To combat data theft and corruption, Arca Trusted OS implements several security mechanisms. By default, full disk encryption safeguards the operating system and user data while they are rest. Additionally, Arca Trusted OS leverages confidential computing techniques to protect data while in use. Arca Trusted OS offers various Kubernetes components that enhance the security of network communications between nodes and pods. Furthermore, Arca Trusted OS includes a cryptographic API within its framework, enabling containers to perform essential cryptographic functions for business purposes. Now that we have a brief understanding of Arca Trusted OS, let's move forward and delve into the demonstration to witness its secure booth capabilities in action. After introducing the operating system, let's go back to the demonstration of Arca Trusted OS running on Raspberry Pi Module 4B. First and foremost, we will showcase that Arca Trusted OS exclusively boots in a known state, ensuring that no tampered software is loaded. This is achieved by fusing our keys in the system on chip, effectively restricting the Raspberry Pi from booting any unauthorized bootloader. Instead, our authenticated bootloader takes charge, securely loading the Linux kernel and the initial RAM disk. Furthermore, we will demonstrate the robust encryption of the entire file system. The encryption keys are securely managed either by a TPM 2.0 or by the OTP memory. Additionally, the root file system undergoes integrity verification to detect any unauthorized modifications. Lastly, we will simulate an attack scenario where an adversary attempts to tamper with a component. In such case, the Arca Trusted OS swiftly detects the tampering and prevents the board from booting as usual. Instead, it initiates a fallback boot process from the recovery partition ensuring uninterrupted operations. This feature not only maintains system integrity, but also facilitates reliable updates. Before we proceed with the demonstrations, let's provide some context to better understand the upcoming showcases. To enable secure boot, it is essential to fuse the Raspberry Pi system on chip with the hash of our public key. This fusion process brings about three significant consequences. Firstly, secure booth cannot be disabled, ensuring a robust security posture. Secondly, downgrading to an older version of the bootloader that doesn't support secure booth is no longer possible. 
And finally, only OS images signed with our private key can be successfully booted, guaranteeing the authenticity of the operating system. Now let's delve into the secure boot flow and follow the diagram to comprehend how Arca Trusted OS boots from end to end. Upon starting the device, the first stage is executed, which is specific to the hardware. Each MPU chip employs its own method to ensure authenticity and or integrity. In the case of Raspberry Pi 4B, a ROM code verifies that the EEP ROM memory contains the correct public key and an authenticated firmware. The EEP ROM firmware is then used to verify and load the bootloader. Arca Trusted OS utilizes U-Boot as its bootloader, responsible for initializing essential device components and loading the next page. In our scenario, the next stage consists of the Linux kernel and the root file system. This stage is redundant and the bootloader selects and verifies the authenticity and loads one of the two systems. A fit image, which is bundled binary, encompasses the Linux kernel, the initial RAM disk and the device tree blob. Once loaded, the initial RAM disk takes charge of the crucial tasks such as unlocking the file system, verifying the integrity of the root file system, and ultimately booting into the final Linux user space along with its applications. By understanding this secure boot flow, we can now proceed with the demonstrations to witness firsthand how Arca Trusted OS ensures a secure and trustworthy boot process on the Raspberry Pi 4B device. The overall demonstration is divided into four scenarios, each showcasing different aspects of the booth process on the Raspberry Pi, following the chronological order. Scenario one focuses on the booth loader stage and demonstrates the repercussions when an attacker attempts to compromise it. We will illustrate the robustness of Arca Trusted OS by showcasing how it mitigates such attacks, ensuring the integrity and security of the booth loader. In scenario two, we will simulate a similar attack, but target the next stage, which is the Linux kernel. This scenario provides insights on how Arca Trusted OS handles such malicious attempts. Additionally, we will witness the fallback mechanism in action, triggered by Arca Trusted OS to ensure continuous operation and protection against compromise. Moving on to scenario three, we will dive into the file disk encryption. Two methods will be presented, one using a TPM 2.0 and the other without. Through this demonstration, we aim to showcase the effectiveness of Arca Trusted OS in safeguarding data by employing encryption techniques, irrespective of the encryption method chosen. Lastly, scenario four will focus on the integrity of the root file system. We will demonstrate how Arca Trusted OS verifies the integrity of the root file system thereby protecting against unauthorized modifications. This scenario highlights the crucial role played by Arca Trusted OS in maintaining a secure and reliable operating environment. Let's begin with the first scenario. In this video, we will start by demonstrating the verification process of the booth image. The booth image consists of essential components such as firmware and the bootloader, which play a crucial role in the system. First, we will showcase the secure and trustworthy verification of the booth image, highlighting how Arca Trusted OS ensures the integrity of these components. Next, we will simulate an attack scenario where an attacker has successfully subverted the original booth loader and replaced it with a malicious one. Through this simulation, we aim to illustrate the robustness of Arca Trusted OS in detecting and preventing such unauthorized modifications. All the incoming videos will be presented under the same form. The Raspberry Pi device is connected to a computer through a serial communication. A Linux terminal is ready to listen incoming serial packets with the Picocom as a serial utility. Let's power up the Raspberry Pi device and see what happens. Initially, we see the logs from the authenticated EPROM firmware. 
These logs displayed the basic initialization steps performed by the firmware, followed by an attempt to load the booth image. Upon locating the booth image, the firmware proceeds to verify its authenticity by checking the RSA signature. In this log, we observe that the verification test has passed, confirming the integrity of the booth image and allowing for its successful loading. Now, let's proceed with the same procedure, but this time with a malicious booth loader embedded within the booth image. The initial phase of the booth process remains the same, with the firmware initializing the essential components. Once again, the booth image undergoes the verification process. However, this time the firmware detects a significant discrepancy. The RSA signature of the booth image no longer matches the expected value. This indicates that the content of the image has been tampered with by an attacker. As a result, the device refuses to load the compromised booth image and it enters a continuous reboot loop, ensuring that the system remains secure and unaffected by the malicious bootloader. Now that we have established the security of the first stage, let's proceed to the second stage of the booth process, the fit image. The fit image is a crucial component as it includes the Linux kernel and the initial RAM disk. In the next part of the demonstration, we will explore how the booth loader verifies both the integrity and authenticity of the fit image. This verification ensures that the Linux kernel and the initial RAM disk have not been tampered with or compromised. Following that, we will simulate an attack scenario by substituting the Linux kernel with a tempered version and attempt to boot the device again. In this video, we will begin at the U-Booth booth loader stage which owns the public keys and is responsible for loading one of the two fit images. The fit image contains a configuration that serves as the first element to be verified. In this log, we can observe that the configuration has been successfully authenticated. The presence of conf plus OK at the end of the last line confirms the verification. Next, the verification process moves on to the Linux kernel. The log displays the correct digest and signature values, which are then recomputed for verification by the booth loader. In this case, the verification is successful as indicated by the node plus OK. Similarly, the verification process is applied to the RAM disk component of the fit image. Again, the presence of node plus OK at the end of the log confirms that the RAM disk has been successfully verified. With the completion of all the verifications, the Linux kernel is now ready to start, ensuring a secure and trusted booth process. In this alternate scenario, we have introduced a malicious Linux kernel into the fit image. The purpose is to demonstrate how the booth loader detects the change and aborts the booth process to prevent the malicious software from running. Once again, the video will start at the U-Booth booth loader stage. As before, the configuration passes the verification process successfully. However, this time the Linux kernel fails to pass the verification. In contrast to the previous video where we saw node plus OK indicating successful verification, we now encounter node fail to verify required signature, followed by error logs. This indicates that the malicious software has been detected, leading to the abortion of the booth process. The device now reboots. We are back at the U-Booth booth loader stage and the booth count counter comes into play. The booth count counter increments with each booth attempt and it can only be reset when the booth process succeeds. We find ourselves back at the booth loader stage with the booth count counter. The booth count counter reaches a predetermined threshold that triggers the fallback mechanism. As a result, the bootloader attempts to boot from the redundant system, which in this case is target B. As the fit image B remains intact and free from tempering, the boot flow resumes and all components undergo successful verification. Now let's proceed to the third step, the file system encryption. Arca Trusted OS offers two methods to store the disk encryption key 
using the TPM 2.0 or the integrated OTP memory. It is recommended to use TPM 2.0 whenever possible. In the next demonstration, we will showcase how Arca Trusted OS behaves when unlocking the encrypted file system using only the OTP memory. We will continue the demonstration from where we left off, at the point where the Linux kernel is about to start, immediately after the verification of the fit image. The Linux kernel begins the initialization process, loading and initializing all the necessary components. The kernel reaches the Arcatrusted OS initial RAM disk stage. At this stage, the Lux module comes into play, responsible for unlocking the file system encryption. Lux, an open source technology, is used for this purpose. In the log, we observe that the OTP method is used to unlock the encrypted volume. The operating system retrieves the private key stored in the OTP memory and uses it to successfully unlock the volume. As indicated by the absence of any error messages, the process completes without any issues, allowing the initial RAM disk to proceed further. The boot flow continues seamlessly without encountering any problems. At this point, we will pause this part of the demonstration as we reach the movement of cruting in our final file system. Full disk encryption plays a vital role in preventing unauthorized access to sensitive data stored in the micro SD card. Additionally, Arca Trusted OS ensures that each encrypted SD card is uniquely associated with its specific device. Board-specific information is used in the encryption decryption process, further enhancing the security measures. To demonstrate the effectiveness of this feature, we will simulate a swap attack. This attack involves taking the microSD card and the TPM from the original device and attempting to use them with another Raspberry Pi device. During this demonstration, we expect the file system to remain encrypted preventing the attacker from getting access to sensitive data and ultimately leading to a failed booth process. The demonstration starts at the U-Booth booth loader stage, allowing us to understand the key steps involved in unlocking the encrypted file system. From left to right, we observe that the U-Booth booth loader extends the TPM PCR 4 and 7 with the booth image signature and internal variables. On the right side of the screen, an error message is displayed, indicating that no TPM device has been detected. This serves as an indication that the device is not equipped with the TPM. The boot flow continues as usual until it reaches the initial RAM disk stage. At this point, we find ourselves in the Lux module once again. On the left side, we see that the operating system extends the PCR4 with OTP digests. However, the attempt to unlock the volume fails because the policy digest does not match the stored one. This is a result of swapping the SD card and TPM to another device, causing the PCR to have different values than expected. On the right side, we encounter a failure message stating no keys available with this passphrase. This occurs because the OTP key is unique to each Raspberry Pi device. Therefore, a device cannot unlock a Lux volume from another device since they possess different keys. As a consequence of the unsuccessful attempt to unlock the encrypted file system, both devices will enter a continuous reboot loop. Now, let's proceed with the demonstration of the root file system integrity. First, it is essential to note that the redundant root file system in Arca Trusted OS is read-only. This means that an attacker who gains access cannot modify the root file system. To further enhance resilience against data corruption, the root file system undergoes integrity checks and incorporates a forward error correction mechanism. This FEC mechanism allows for the correction of small amount of corrupted bytes. 
To demonstrate the root file system's integrity, let's execute the following DD command from the OS user space. This command will write 600 bytes of random data simulating data corruption. The demonstration begins at the moment of the Linux kernel loading, after the random bytes have already been written to the root file system. The boot process progresses normally until reaching the initial RAM disk stage. At this stage, the Verity module is loaded. This module follows the Lux module responsible for unlocking the file system. The Verity module's objective is to validate the integrity of the root file system and correct any detected errors. In the log, the last two lines indicate that the operating system has successfully fixed almost 600 errors in total. These errors correspond precisely to the amount of random data that was introduced earlier using the DD command. The OS achieves this error correction by using metadata located outside of the root file system. The boot flow resumes normally, and the system will proceed to the final Linux user space. That concludes our demonstration of the full boot flow of Arca Trusted OS on Raspberry Pi 4B. With the implementation of Arca Trusted OS, the Raspberry Pi 4B device becomes a secure platform suitable for running critical applications and hosting sensitive information. Throughout this demonstration, we have witnessed the comprehensive security measures provided by Arca Trusted OS ensuring authenticity, integrity, and confidentiality from the beginning to the end of the booth process. Thank you for joining us in this demonstration, and we look forward to seeing you in future SISEC videos. Stay safe and secure.